y'all bear with me here. I'm not the best of organizing and speaking, so I uh, hope you'll bear with me. Give me a few minutes. Uh, as we gather, this is a time for us to remember and reflect on the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. It was God's will that a perfect sacrifice be made to pay for the price of sin. It was done for all who will believe and accept Jesus as their Savior, the Son of God. When Jesus instituted this memorial with his disciples in Matthew 26, I don't believe they could grasp what he was going to suffer. He says, drink from it, all of you. I like the fact that he made mention all of you. I know there was only his disciples with him there at the time, but and today we know that means all of us. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. In that he was telling them he must die. For in Hebrews 9 and 16 it says, For where a covenant is, there must of necessity be the death of the one who made it. Even had they understood that he was going to die, could they have ever understood, or can we even understand the weight that he was carrying with him to that unspeakable, and if I may, quite beautiful death. When he went to the garden that night, he said, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. He asked for his father to let this cup pass from him if it is possible, yet not as I will, but as you will. He said this three times. And in Luke, we read that in being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. This cup he spoke of was the wrath that had to come for the sin he was willing to assume for each one of us. I ask you to let us think on his agony and suffering as we do this. In Luke 22 and 19, he says, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Before his body was subjected to the cross for suffering and display, it was scourged. He was clothed in purple in order to be mocked. A crown of thorns was placed on his head. He was beaten and spit on. Then he was walked, carrying his own instrument of death to the place he would die. Once he reached this place, his death did not come immediately. He had to be subjected to the worst physical torture yet, and it lasted so long. Yet in the midst of all this, he says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Pardon me. Uh, <clears throat> I pray that we keep these thoughts, uh, that we keep worldly thoughts at bay. During this time, we focus solely on Christ. I pray that our minds can be transformed, as we spoke of in Romans and 12. I pray that we will yield and take this opportunity to renew our minds and, and have the Spirit guide us, for that's our only reasonable service. We know that we should reflect on this often, yet we use this time today to center our minds on the life He lived and died for us, and on the life that we are living. I pray that, pray that we take this time to reflect. As we go back to the earlier verse, where it said, my blood which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I pray that we don't take that for granted. That blood cleanses us and is a beautiful thing, but it came at a price. I pray we remember that price not only here today, but when we leave here, as we go about our daily lives, because his spirit is a part of us. If y'all will be opening up your uh, your bread, we'll uh, would you bow with me, dear Heavenly Father? Thank you so much for this opportunity you give us to gather here this morning. Thank you, Father, for your word that you had before us. I'm afraid that uh, 
it's not before us enough, Lord. And I pray that we take this time to reflect on that as well. Dear Father, as um, we partake of this bread, which represents Christ's body upon that cross for our sins, I pray that we can do so in a way that's well-pleasing in your sight. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. If you'll bow with me again. Dear Heavenly Father, in a like manner, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents that precious blood that was shed on the cross, I pray that we again will do so in a way that's well pleased in your sight. I pray that we, uh, that we uh, can understand that that blood was for our sins. And uh, it was Jesus' sacrifice. It's in his name we pray, Lord. Amen. pray as we close this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's unclouded day. We thank you for a day of sunshine and a chance tonight to come together in fellowship and maybe catch up and to see children laugh and smile. Father, we thank you for maybe some of those moments that in the past we haven't said thank you for, and maybe they're even more important in these times. Father, we ask that you be with us this week as we have resealed our commitment to you through your son, Jesus, and we go into a world where we are supposed to show you, your son, your spirit, through our daily actions and interactions. Father, the world is watching. Even in a time where we may not interact with as many people, they're still watching. Father, let us be that light. Let us be that salt. Let us be those things that draw people to you, not to ourselves, not to necessarily this place, but to a God that's a father, a son, and a spirit that changes, that heals, that hopes, that Father gives us future. Father, it's been a week of change. We've had a time change this morning. We've got political changes maybe in the future. But Father, the great thing is you have reminded us today that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you're my firm foundation.